Hello everybody, my name is Marcelo Comacardi. I'm a technical solution architect at Cisco and today we're going to discuss Site ID design and best practices for a Cisco SD-WAN implementation. So within the Cisco SD-WAN world, we have some terminologies like System IP, which is a unique identifier per device, and Site ID. The Site ID can be compared to the BGP AS number. In this example, we have a data center with dual devices and we can see each system IP is unique. However, they share the same site ID. In our branch location, we have a unique system IP and a different site ID. By default, sharing the same site ID among routers is going to prevent tunnel formation between each other. So in our example, the data center routers with site ID 100, they are going to form tunnels against branch routers site ID 200. However, they are not going to establish tunnels against each other. At this moment, you might be asking yourself, why do I care about site IDs? I mean, why don't we just add site IDs for whatever site comes first, like site 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on? So let's discuss a little bit around that. While defining policies, we have the capability of create policies for different sites, in traditional routing, it's good practice to have continuous IP address schema. In SD-WAN, the same concept applies. Instead of using wildcard masks to apply our policies, we're relying on site ID lists. And here you can see how easy and flexible it is to apply different policies to different site types and different VPNs or VRFs. In this workflow, we can see that we are first defining our policies and at the end, we're defining where we're going to apply this policy and towards which VRF. Another benefit of having a good site ID design is to help troubleshooting. In the next session, we're going to learn how we can identify a site based on the site ID. So what are the best practices for designing site IDs? So first, let's consider that site ID can range from 1 up to 4 billion. That gives us a wide range of options while identifying our site types. Keep in mind that each implementation is unique and our solution is flexible enough to accommodate any requirement. In our example, we are defining three regions, Americas, Europe, and Asia. We are using the thousands to identify those. So 1000 for Americas, 2000 for Europe, and 3000 for Asia. The next step would be to identify the site types. So following our implementation, we have data centers, site type 1, type 2, and type 3. And we also have some subvariants like site type 1 with direct internet access, as well as site type 2 with direct internet access. So data center will range from 1 to 9, type 1, 10 to 49, type 1 DIA 50 to 99, and so on. If we say site ID 3001, we can clearly identify it's going to be a data center in Asia. With those attributes defined, we can now start working on our lists. So lists are going to make your life much easier while applying policies to different site types or regions. And here, you can be as flexible as you need. The site list can match a unique site ID. You can also match a range of site IDs. And you can also separate matching multiple ranges or unique site IDs separated by a comma. We would like to recommend you to have a dedicated address space for test sites. So at this moment, you could pause the video and run some exercises. Could you identify which region and site type would be site ID 2171? So we could identify that 2000 is Europe and 171 is going to be a range for site type 2 with DIA. Additional written documentation can be found at Cisco Validate Design. This is going to be a different type of implementation. However, it shares the same concepts already discussed. 
As you can see, this is a different approach with a more detailed subset of types of sites. We have different types of transports and we can use the site ID to help us to match all of the different site types in order to facilitate our day-to-day -day operations. You can find a link on the description down below with the Cisco Validate Design documentation where you can find additional information, configuration guides, and best practice recommendations. In the Cisco vManage, you can easily access your site ID lists from configuration, policies, custom options, and lists. You find there a great variety of types of lists you can create, including applications, prefixes, VPNs, and so on. For our study case, we're looking for sites. Under sites, you can manipulate the ones you have created so you can edit those, you can copy, delete, or you can also create new lists. One thing to keep in mind is that if you manipulate lists that are active, it's going to influence your production network. So a good idea would be to copy the list, make the changes you want, and then apply it. At this moment, you are ready to come back to your overlay and see how you are defining your site IDs. Thank you very much for your time and leave your questions down below.